Jared Vanderbilt's attention to detail, lateral quickness, and length locked up the chef and his staff in Alcatraz, whether he was switching or screen navigating. Anthony Davis is nearly doubling up the second-ranked player in blocked shots per game during these playoffs, and just became the first Laker since Shaquille O'Neal in 2004 with a 30-point, 20-rebound playoff game. And defensively speaking, LeBron Raymond James Sr. has picked up his dominance right where he left it in the Memphis series. Stay tuned for a film breakdown on those three driving factors which have stolen the Lakers' home court advantage entering tonight's Game 2 at Chase. A good portion of LA's defensive sets featured drop coverage, but on the opening offensive possession for Golden State, they run their five-out Kansas action, and Vanderbilt's gonna switch from Steph onto Clay, and his fundamental positioning to always keep a hand up, plus his timing, scuffs out the low bounce pass. More on Vando coming up. For AD, in drop coverage after D'Lo goes under the screen, AD's high one-handed stunt out to Wiggins knocks the ball loose. Since D'Lo went under and also stunned it onto Wiggs, he's right there to contest Raymond after Green collects the loose ball and chucks one up. We'll mostly focus on defense in today's upload, but on an offensive possession, B-Ball Breakdown tweeted out something that I mentioned in a previous Laker upload, which is that on this LA weak side pin down action, they invert the traditional roles to have Reeves set the pin down for Davis, whereas typically it'd be the five setting it for the three. This allows AD to mix up instances where he pops out to space the floor with jumpers, or in this case, take it downhill after curling off the Aust him screen. On the other end, quickly flashing back to the Memphis series, where Bronny Sr. was dominant whether it was forcing ill-advised off-balance layup attempts, springing up for swats as the traditional rim protector, or timing his steps and momentum to safely stride back for patented chase downs. Among players who've played at least five games on 35 plus minutes per game, James owns the second best defensive rating in these playoffs, only behind AD. Roaming as a Derwin James-esque safety on the backside, Braun's gonna scuff out this horn's give and go between Steph and Loon, as he doesn't leave Davis out to dry after AD rotates to Steph swiftly picking up Looney and Curry's blind spot, and he stuffs the attempt from Kavon. Here, he stunts onto Poole to force a kick out to Draymond, just subtly fakes like he's gonna pick up GP2 in the corner, but Poole doesn't realize this, and after getting it back from Draymond on the bounce entry, James is still in the vicinity for the beastly pin to the glass recovery. Curry's gonna sauce up Reeves with a momentum cross before going downhill, but LeBron's footwork to pivot diagonally, then follow up that pivot with a shuffle, entails perimeter recovery, and delaying his movement ever so slightly, in addition to that, further baits Steph into thinking he'll be able to fend off LeBron for the in-traffic finish, but not so fast, LeBron's elusive defensive footwork has Curry fooled. This tough-to-gauge defensive pivoting also forces Draymond into an ill-advised drive as James baits close out to Wiggins before getting back to Green for a perfect contest. Don't dismiss all the work James does on the glass, as he's top 5 in boards per game these playoffs, as here, he first boxes out Green, and then beats the hustling Wiggins to it with his quick hands. More talk on LeBron to close out this video, back to the film room on Vando and AD's mastery. This Bucks playset from former Milwaukee assistant Darvin Ham is called Double, but after the Warriors deny the strong side double screening action, instead of the 1 in LeBron swinging it to the 2 in D'Lo to counter that as the play entails, D'Lo slips a screen for Braun, James pump fakes at the top of the arc, finds one of the two strong side screeners in Davis before cutting to the basket while D'Lo clears out, all while Davis caps off the improvisation by calmly fading away near the elbow. Warriors run a floppy action with Steph curling around it, but after Steph catches it like you just saw from James, the elusive defensive footwork from Davis makes it seem like he's rotating off the ball handler and onto another defender, in this case Draymond, baiting a curry floater, which the 7'5 wingspan of the brow takes care of. Benefiting off the more advanced than we give it credit to be Ham's system, we going ham! This delay rip action is innovated with the 5 in Davis setting another on ball for Schroeder, and after the 3 in TBJ slips the initial screen, instead of screening for Rui in the opposite corner, James is available for the outlet on the wing, and is gonna drive, draw two defenders, 
then find Davis in the dunker spot for the wide open flush. Weak side clear out for AD this time, where on the catch, he's gonna craftily fake a baseline drive with a dicey pivot, size up the shorter Looney, making it seem like he's about to either pivot multiple times and or begin a post up, but conversely just executes what he initially faked, a baseline attack, out muscling Loon Dog to get to his spot while navigating the baseline before drifting back to get to position under the rim while bruising through Kavan's pressure to find the box on the backboard and bank it home. Weak side pick and pop with D loading has Davis cut all the way into the top of the foul line to fake the roll before he catches it. He takes one dribble backwards and also drifts backwards on his jumper to lace it over the top of Loon and draw a slight contact, which the refs whistle down to make it an and one. Zoom's action between LeBron and Vando leads out to a swing pass to Davis, who fakes the DHO, and instead, D'Lo cuts back door, and it's an easy finish after a great bouncer from AD. That same fake DHO keep action that Sacramento was so successful with in round one versus Golden State has D'Lo pitch it to Davis at the elbow and curl around him to sell the DHO. AD fakes the handoff, opening up the lane for him to attack. Defensively, before getting back to Vando's masterclass, two of AD's four blocks on the night came firstly right here as Davis stops short around the top of the arc to bait the drive, then while galloping backwards somehow gets back in the vicinity to meet Wiggins at the rim with a ridiculous swat. More five out Kansas action from Golden State like you saw to open up, where D'Lo does a great job at initially holding Steph in front then funneling Curry into the help of AD, and with the lack of spacing provided by Draymond, this is simply a poor decision from Steph to attack the paint, with the best shot blocker in the game by far there to stuff him. However, majority of the bothersome work to steal the chef's recipe was due to the pressure of Jared Vanderbilt. The Vandalorians picking up Steph full court as Sacramento didn't do that often, as here, as Curry crosses the timeline, Watch the screen navigation to just spin off the pick from Green and get right back to Steph who fumbles it before D'Angelo's fundamental hands up stance scuffs out a desperate corner outlet to Wiggs. Basic cross screen for Curry again set by Green is again met by zero trouble from Vando who glues himself to off ball Steph and denies the handoff from Loon with his man to man pressure and contingent hands up awareness. Jared's gonna blow up this drag screen from Looney before mercilessly trailing Steph into the right corner. The Wiggs cross screen has no effect. Steph's forced to put it on the deck. Great intimidation from D'Lo to legally cut under Curry and Vando being right there as well makes this shot an impossibility. Split action with Wiggs dishing from the post sees Jared go under Looney's flare to avoid any bit of a pin from Kavan. Wiggins still finds a high arc and seam to get it to Steph, but as Curry catches it, Vando is already directly trailing him, and he sends a message by sending Steph's floater flying off the backboard. Running with Steph in the fourth with seemingly zero lost stamina, then springing off the pin down from Wiggs, the drop coverage of Davis becomes overwhelming for Steph. Vando makes it a full on trap and cuts off any potential outlet for Curry by widening his stance. To secure the steal. However, my favorite stance of the night came right here, where when Kerr starts Steph with the ball instead of running him through screens off it, Vando just increases his desperate intensity, forcing Steph to hand it off to Draymond, then blowing up any potential zooms action by cutting off the primary passing lane. Then, as Draymond does find the slightest seam, Vando funnels Steph into Davis before peel switching onto Looney and shocking him with his most emphatic block of the night. I talked more about Vando in yesterday's upload, but going back to AD, and LeBron would speak on the value of his running mate post game, saying quote, number three will be up in the rafters one day, end quote. High praise from the king, deservedly so, based off the beastly two-way production from the brow as of late. The egregious disrespect for LeBron James, meanwhile, has come in the form of not receiving a single vote for MVP, lunatics making him number one on this list of players they wouldn't want taking the last shot, and Stephen A stating that he's afraid of Stephen Curry in this clip. I suspect 
there's a healthy level of fear. F-E-A-R. Yes, I said it. Fear oh of my Steph God. Curry. On that note, just wanted to cap off today's upload by saying, I'm looking forward to seeing how not merely LeBron, but whether it's D'Lo, Hachimura, Schroeder, Reeves, of course, AD, among others, stand up in response to the disrespect the mainstream media has for their near 40-year-old phenom and, of course, their primary leader vocally both on and off the court throughout the rest of this series against the defending champ.